Right, I've always been a big fan of space games, and for me, it started with the SD conversion of the Atari classic Star Raiders. I love that game so much, I must have jumped into hyperspace a gazillion times. And we had some great space shooters on the Atari SD. From the arcade perfect conversion of the original Star Wars, to Star Glider, another vector graphics game with one of the most memorable soundtracks on the system. If you were more into strategy, you could of course go with the David Braben classic Elite or a sequel. And if that isn't complex enough for you, and you wanted to play something really freaky, check out Captain Blood. E.T. Home Phone. And the closest thing we ever got to a space opera game was Digital Image Design's Epic. A technical marvel, but a flawed game. In my opinion, of course. And games like Wing Commander never made it to the Atari ST, which is a real shame. So by 1994, I went over to the dark side and got really addicted to the Laurent Holland classic X-Wing on my dad's PC. What a game that was. But still, while I was enjoying titles like Doom, Mortal Kombat and X-Wing, I wanted my Atari ST to be the best machine. And I was still buying SD format every month, so when I read the preview of the new upcoming SDE Space Shooter 05, I got so excited. Was this going to be the space adventure I was hoping for? Today I want to bring you all the details of one of the most ambitious games on the Atari SDE, and maybe even the last commercial release for the system. So put on your spacesuit and get ready to kick some more fun butt, because this is the story of 05. In 1992, a guy named Andrew Gisby released his first full game on the Atari ST, a shareware title called d -Res. But wait, I'm going way ahead of myself, we have to go back even further. It started in the late 70s and early 80s. Andrew was obsessed with coin-op arcades and the UK home computer scene. He found computers and graphics utterly mesmerizing. Around this time, his grandfather purchased an Acorn Electron and his interest in programming started. When movies like Tron appeared, he became more and more intrigued in how to achieve such computer visualizations. And so he learned how to program in BASIC. But it wasn't until he left school and he got a job that allowed him to buy his first personally owned home computer when Andrew dived into hardcore coding. He got himself an Atari 520 SDE, a copy of Degas Elite and Highsoft Pack, and of course a burning ambition to write games. He spent hours teaching himself to program in 68k assembler, reading books, bulletin boards and talking to other game developers, sharing knowledge. But a series of articles in SD World on transformations and 3D math changed everything. Like most coders, Andrew had lots of ideas. He always started working on them, finishing 75% of the job but he never got any publisher's interest, so he went on to something else. Building a vast routine library on the way. And by 1992, he went the shareware route. d -Res was a top-down shooter, inspired by arcade classics such as Asteroids and Smash TV. With a dark sci-fi undertone, digital sound effects and moody graphics. And as an extra, it came with the music tracker demo The Quark. d -Res was well received on bulletin boards and fanzines, and also got on the cover disc of SD Action magazine. However, commercially it wasn't a success, but Andrew was not about to give up. Because of his obsession with 3D graphics, 
He had always dreamed of making a game inspired by the space battle scenes of the movie The Last Starfighter. This new game would be his ode to 3D marvels like Elite, Starglider and Interface. And because this time around he wanted to see a game written by himself getting published, Andrew looked into his big routine library and started tinkering around. And after working a lot of late hours, a rough demo of a space game was finished. And something unexpected was about to happen. After the release of DRES, Andrew was approached by Chris Dillon, the CEO of Caspian Software. He loved the game. And when Andrew showed him some demos of a space game he was working on, well, the rest is history. And for the first time ever, his game was going to get published. The relationship between Andrew and Caspian Software was a positive one, and lots of ideas were exchanged. With the new publisher on board, the scope of the project was getting bigger. Zero Five was going to have a more cinematic feel to it, with a background story and animated cutscenes. This is immediately apparent when booting the game, as the player is treated with a very dark and atmospheric intro sequence featuring scanned imagery and digital sound effects. Andrew spent ages on the intro, making it just right. He wanted to convey a grand historic passage to the time of Zero Five, giving the game some gravity. And for story? Well, in 1961, man reached for the stars. But something was observing us. And with envious eyes, it drew its plans to invade. And now it's up to you to protect the Earth from an alien race called the Morphons. The game was also going to be mission based. Zero Five uses a scripted system, so a level will play in roughly the same way every time. Everything from aliens to computer verbal warnings in game works to these scripts, making it easy to add extra missions. Still, the way the alien spaceships behave changes each time you play a mission, so that part of the game is dynamic. And the scripts also made another really nifty feature in game possible. There are certain aliens that fire a quantum eradicator bomb. If you don't manage to shoot them before they hit you, the explosion of the bomb could send you back in time making you play certain parts of the mission script again. While most of the core code of the game was written three years ago, during this final year of development, Andrew's main focus was on 3D graphics. Everything was programmed in assembler and the math involved was mind-bending. The CPUs just weren't fast enough and so a lot of lookup tables and integer math tricks were used. Everything had to be traded off and adjusted relative to the speed of the CPU. And while the 68000 had a very rich set of programmable commands and the wonderfully flat addressable memory model, Andrew tried to stick to the faster computational commands like add, subtract, bit shifting. Luxury commands like multiply, divide and on occasion conditional branching were avoided. One of the things Andrew was most proud of were the missions on land. And yes, the Zero Five had those as well. These levels were created using a height map. Height maps are mapping of height points stored in an image file. One of the common methods for storing height maps is using the bitmap file format, as done here, and storing the heights of the terrain in each pixel. So when you fly around the level, it's reading your position on the height map and drawing the land around you. It was super expensive in CPU compute terms, and that's one of the reasons why the draw distance is so short. 
The water parts were animated as well, featuring polygon waves, and a rudimentary AI was also programmed. The enemies responded to your actions, and each alien had a different attack pattern. Zero Five has some really crazy sound effects. An internal scripting engine was created to deliver sound samples at different frequencies to multiple left and right stereo channels. This way, you could tinker around with samples without eating too much precious CPU. Oh, and a fun fact, the computer voice you hear during gameplay is Andrew's. Finally, Caspian Software contacted Dave Newman to compose a pumping techno soundtrack. In the past, Dave had done the music for the game Sleepwalker. Numerous tracks were composed, but only one or two made it to the game. Caspian was a very ambitious publisher, and just as with their previous release Rock and Roll Clams, they wanted Zero 05 to make full advantage of the hardware it was running on. At least an SDE was needed, making use of the blitter. If you had more than one meg of RAM, in-game speech was possible. And on Falcons and TTs, it made use of the faster CPU. Finally, Accelerator boards up the polygon in color detail and shading. It also ran on VGA screens and supported the jackpad. And as a last bit of fun, when you bought Zero 05, it contained a registration form called PIS, Personal Image System. If you sent this in with your photo, Caspian would send a scanned image back to you on a status disk which you could use for your save games. How cool is that? Zero 05 was released by the end of 1994. The game got a very positive reception in magazines. But for Andrew, however, the launch day was a rather toxic experience. He had been working for almost two years. It was a complete burnout to get the game over the line. But then, within a few hours of the first sales, ripped versions were appearing on pirate BBSs. It was such a disappointment. Zero 05 was a commercial flop and it completely killed Andrew's interest in games on Atari home computers. However, the Atari UK division was so impressed with the game, Caspian secured a deal with them to write games for their new Jaguar console. Eventually, they did a version of Zero 05 on the Jag, for which Andrew had a small consulting role as his family life took the upper hand. But that is a story for another video. Andrew didn't write an assembler column in ST format before completely leaving the game development world and starting a career in serious computing. Well, until now that is. In 2019, Andrew decided to give up the corporate career to develop games full time. He started a company called Duckerside Games and has a couple of projects in the pipeline. His first game, Vindex, is an amazing looking shooter, drawing on the idea of shrinking and entering a fantastic voyage-esque scene. Dutch Dungeons is a passion project, which he describes as an augmented reality roguelike dungeon crawler. Shibuki is a mobile-only casual game, based on an ID Andrew got when he was out for a walk in the rain and a drop landed on his smartphone. It's out right now. But my personal favorite, that must be Finley's Color of Radiation, a 3D deflector type of puzzle game in a beautiful 50s, 60s comic book art style set in a secret laboratory filled with aliens and UFOs. This one will be released for mobile, PC and maybe even consoles. Exciting stuff! I have always been a big fan of Zero Five, and even though it didn't have as much depth as the other space games I was playing at the time, like Wing Commander Part 3 or X-Wing, I still enjoyed every bit of it. Zero Five is mission based, but in the end it's a straight up space shooter. Kill everything that moves on screen. A true technical marvel with great gameplay to boot. And one of those games to really show what the SDE was capable of. And I wanted to do a tribute to this one for a very long time. I found this post on Atari forum written by myself dating back to 2006. Well, it didn't work out then, but now, 15 years later, it finally happened. Thanks for watching. Stay Atari. Bye.